What's up guys, Matty here. So in our last episode we saw how we can create a stateful application using Kafka streams and we did some aggregations so that we can transform bank transactions into bank balances. Now what we want to do is we want to create a REST API on top of our application so that we can query the state store in which we have stored all the bank balances and we can expose them to the internet. Pretty cool, right? We're going to be using Spring Framework to create the REST API and we're going to modify our application slightly so that we can introduce Spring. So welcome to Programming with Mati. Querying the state store in Kafka Streams is a great feature to have. It allows us to see the state that we have aggregated or that we have stored in the state store that Kafka Stream provides. And we can also create REST APIs on top of it so that we can expose it to different consumers all over the internet. In this tutorial, we're going to be using Spring Boot to create a REST API. And Spring Boot is a framework for Java that we use to create standalone web applications. They really make it easy to create new REST APIs. And also Spring integrates with a lot of different databases, message brokers, etc. So it's a very useful tool to know when you are a Java web developer. And for our tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to modify our existing bank transaction application and we are going to add a REST GET endpoint to return the bank balance for a given ID. So the endpoint will look like this, GET bank balance and the bank balance ID as a path parameter. And we are going to learn in this tutorial how we can query the Kafka Streams state store to return it into a REST call. And this is how our application will look like. We will have a Spring Boot application and the Spring Boot application will have the Kafka Streams topology and the Kafka Streams application inside of it. Then we will have a bank balance service class that we will create and this service class will access Kafka Streams state store. Finally, we are going to have a bank balance controller which will turn the response into a JSON file and we're going to return it to the client, which in this case, we're going to use simply a browser like Google Chrome. We have also our bank transaction producer that we use in our previous tutorial. And this bank transaction producer we use to generate new transactions that are aggregated into a bank balance. All right, so we're going to jump right into the go now. But before we do that, let me tell you that I'm doing a lot of things to generate more content for you guys. I have created a new Twitter account that you can follow in the video description. And you can also find in the video description all the links to Spring Boot, my GitHub, the GitHub repository for this demo, and also a lot of other useful links. Also, as always, destroy the like button if you like this video, share it with your friends, let me know what's useful, what's not useful in the comment section. And that's it. Let's jump right into the code. We have downloaded the repository and we are in the POM file. If you look at the project, we have the POM file here. And in here, I have already added all the dependencies that we need. We need the parent POM to be the Spring Boot parent POM. And we had to add the Spring Boot rep dependencies. So now we are ready to start working with a Spring Boot application. First thing we are going to do is we're going to um, modify our main class so that it can behave as a Spring application. So every Spring Boot application will have a main class with a Spring Boot annotation. So it's going to be like this Spring Boot application. And now we have to add some code here in the main, which is um, Spring Boot application, Spring application dot run. And we have to send the class as a parameter. And we have to send also the arguments. And that's it. And now we will have to extract all this into a configuration class. So I'm going to move it into our existing configuration class here. And 
in here I'm going to add a configuration annotation that we have in Spring and I'm going to move a method here say public uh, Kafka streams Kafka streams and now we have and we are going to need an extra configuration for our, for our Kafka streams application which is going to be something called oh I forgot to add the bin annotation so now we're telling spring that we have a bin in the application context called Kafka streams which is an, an implementation of Kafka streams and I forgot also the return there we go so this remains mostly the same we have the start we added the shutdown hook and finally we return the Kafka streams in instance so that it is available for any spring bean out there we are going to send two properties for our spring application here one of the properties will be the Kafka streams host info and the other one is going to be Kafka streams state directory so I'm going to extract this create this as a field in this class string and I actually don't want this static um, oh, I need to change this and I need to make this a bean Let's call it uh, Kafka Streams Props. And uh, in here, instead of this, we are going to remove this here and we're going to receive it as a parameter here. In Spring, you can receive beans as parameters in your builder methods, in your factory methods. This would be Kafka. Uh, streams props properties props and now we're going to put here the props and we are good to go and now we have to create another field here these are going to be strings and in spring we can send properties with the value annotation so we can say here um, Kafka streams state there and we can add a default value with a colon and we can say here let's say temp Kafka streams bank and then we are going to add a property here which is going to be Kaf Kafka streams host info and we are going to have a default value local host um, local host 8080 this is where we are going to start our application so let's see what we have done we have created a bin for the Kafka stream properties and this bin is being received in this factory method to build the Kafka streams instance. In the Kafka streams instance we are creating the topology, we are initiating our instance with the start method, we are adding the shutdown hook and then we are returning this so that it's available for other uh, objects in the spring application context. And we are going to be using this into our service that we're building to access the state store so now let's create our rest endpoint to do this we are going to come here and say java class and uh, let's say controller bank balance controller and this is how we create endpoints in spring we say uh, rest controller because we're going to create a rest endpoint and request mapping to define the path. So the path here is going to be bank balance. 
and we are going to create a method public um, public is going to return something called response entity bank balance and we are going to say get bank balance by ID and we're going to send as parameter the ID of the bank balance bank balance ID now we have to annotate this so that spring knows this is a rest endpoint to do that we do get mapping and get mapping is going to create a get endpoint for our um, service and we can say here slash bank balance id and this is the name of the variable that we are going to be using and we also have to add this name here as a path variable so now we have the path variable and we say here bank balance id and it matches with this one we can also add here we can add this as value sorry value and we can add the return type produces and we're going to return an application json and the other thing that we want to do is we want to create a service so i'm going to say a new class say service bank balance service and in spring we can annotate the services with the add service annotation so that we can tell spring this is a service and it's available for the application context and in here we are going to create a method that is going to return a bank balance and it say get bank balance by id string bank balance id and just for the sake of our test let's just say return bank balance and i think we have to add the builder annotation here so that now we can build it like this builder build and we can add let's say an id we can add an amount, let's say three a new big decimal like that. We can add last update, could be new date and the latest transaction. Let's say we can have the latest transactions, bank balance transaction builder. Let's add some more data here. Let's say, um, balance id one uh, state approved and time new date amount 10 new big decimal 10 that should be enough for now all right so going back to our controller we can inject the service that we created bank balance service balance service and to inject it i'm going to use the constructor so i'm going to create a constructor like this and i'm going to add the auto wired annotation this tells spring to look for an implementation of this class and add it here so since we have since we have this service spring is going to create it and it's going to then use it to create the bank balance controller and here we can make this final now let's say return response entity okay and the body here is going to be bank balance service 
get bank balance ID, bank balance ID, and it doesn't matter what we send because it's stopped at the moment. So we can actually try and run this application now. Let's see what happens. Now that it has started, let's call back balance and let's say ID one. And as we see here, we have our rest endpoint already created and working. So this is excellent, excellent news for us. Okay, so now that we have our rest endpoint working completely, we have to modify our service so that we can query the state store. And also we'll have to do a small change in our topology so that we can do that. So let's go to our topology class here. Uh, topology and we will have to modify how we create the state store in our previous tutorial we did we did this but now we will have to use a different way and bear with me because this is kind of ceremonial we'll have to say here as and we have to send the store name so the store name can be bank balances store and we can extract it as a constant and then we have to say instead of this with we will have to say with key set and we will say long because our key is long and with value set and the balance server that we already had the only change that we need to do here is we'll have to add the types. So this is long, this is bank balance. And finally, this one is a bit weird, but it's a key value store. And it's bytes. And byte array. Now everything is working. So what we did is we added a name for our state store so that we can query it now from our service. So if we go to our service, one of the things that we'll need to do is we'll have to inject Kafka streams. So let's say, let's add it here, Kafka streams. And we want to add it as a constructor parameter. Let's add a constructor parameter, auto wired. Now we need to remove this and implement the actual code. So first we're going to create a method to get the store. So let's say get store and the get store method is going to return a read only key value store with the value being, with the key with the key being a long and the value being a bank balance. And it's going to look like this. We're going to say Kafka streams dot store store query parameters from name and type and the name of our store we had it in a constant in the bank balance topology there and then query about store types key value store let's see are we missing anything no i think that's it so now we have our store and we can say get bank balance id and actually the our bank balance is not a string it's a long so let's change it here and we'll have to change it also in our controller here, let's say long. Okay, so now we are ready. Let's move this to final. So now we are ready with all the changes and this is how easy it is. And now we can run our application from our Docker Compose as we usually do. So let's go here. Okay, topics are created as we expected. Now we can run our Spring application from here. The application is started and we're going to run our bank transaction producer so that we can stream transactions, get new balances and we can see the balances 
when we call the REST API. Okay, and now if we go to here, let's see, bank balance and ID one, we have 500 is the balance. And we have this, this is the last transaction. What happens if we say two here? Two, the amount is 3,000. This is really good. And let's say three. And we have amount 500, four, 2,000. There were a transaction, the last transaction was rejected. So this is all very good, right? Well, guys, that's all for today. We have learned the basics on how we can query the state store for a Kafka Streams application. And we have also learned how we can create an endpoint in Spring Boot to access that data. So in the next episode, we're going to learn what happens when we add a second instance of a Kafka Streams application. Where does the state go? Is it shared? What happens if we take down one of the applications? Do we lose data? All these questions we're going to address in our next episode of Programming with Mati. So I'll be waiting for all of you. Bye.